Hi everyone. It's been a while since I've done a garden video. We've had so much rain here. We haven't. It's been a long time since I've been able to get out and do any garden work. Up until a few days ago, if we walked out here, he would have started sinking down in the muck. So we couldn't get the tillers through, and we couldn't really use a hoe. And well, if you start pulling the weeds out by hand, you ended up pulling out your own plants because the ground was so soft. So the last couple days, we've had a bit of a heat wave and the ground's drying up pretty good. Actually, ironically, we could almost use more rain now. But I've been out here weeding like crazy trying to get caught up. And I managed to unearth, uncover, whatever you want to call it, with all this broccoli that was buried in weeds. It's still got, uh, you probably can't see it, but it's still shining in the dew from this morning. But it's doing really well, considering it was planted so late too. And there's, so there's the two rows of broccoli, and then it's about a row and a quarter of celery, which is doing not too bad. And then the rest of this is in potatoes. I know it looks like a lot of weeds, but if you get up a little closer, they're actually potato plants. We'll be running the tiller through here, hopefully later today or tomorrow to get rid of the burdock coming up in between them. Um, most of these potatoes are the purple potatoes, or technically they're called blue, but because they turn kind of bluish when you cook them, but they look purple. And then there's a few of the solid reds that are red all the way through. And then the ones at the back, I think those ones, which ones were those? I think those were the actual red potatoes, the regular reds. I have to, can't quite remember. There's a lot of volunteer ones coming up in here, and I picked up a lot of them and put them into rows because they overwintered from last year. Let's go have a look at the other gardens. This one over here is really weedy. I managed to get the first row here of strawberries done. I gotta weed the next one, and then the cucumbers, I gotta unearth them. That's that big weedy patch in the middle. And then on the other side of that, the potatoes are already done. Because I think there's four rows of potatoes over there. Um, I'm making headway though. It'll, the rain will hold off, I can get caught up, and then it won't get this bad again. Why can't the plants grow as good as the weeds when you get a week of rain? Why does it do that? <laughs> they grow so much better, don't they? As soon as the heat comes out and all that wa after all that water, they just go crazy. But anyway, we've been harvesting about oh at le a quarter to a week in strawberries between this these two rows and then that little patch by the barn that we put in a couple years ago. Um, I know you're supposed to pick the flowers off these their first year. I just can't stand to do that, and I never have before. And the berries have always been just fine. So the kids are really thrilled with that. I haven't been able to get any in the house yet to make any jam or anything with. They eat them up so quick. Oh yeah, I found uh, a couple of volunteer plants here. Some kind of cucumber or squash. And there's another one over here. So I'll be leaving those to see what they turn into. Ooh, look cucumber beetle. Bye bye. Nasty, nasty, nasty things. It's just their season is just starting. I hope I don't have too much trouble with them. Let's have a look at the patch just by the barn here. This one is buttercup squash. It started flowering about a week ago. There's seven plants in here and they're starting to vine out. My first time growing buttercup squash. Usually I grow butternut, which I have down in the other garden. These are the plants I started in my greenhouse. Oh, rotten, dirty. Look at that. Look at all those cucumber beetles in there. Oh, right. 
fucking rat, rat, get. Oh, gross. Look at them all. Oh. I'm gonna get some neem oil, spray some neem oil in there in a minute. Um, those cucumber beetles, they'll eat the flowers, and they eat the vines, and they'll eat the baby fruit, and you end up with nothing. They're horrible. I've been watching for the squash bugs, too, but I haven't seen any of them yet. You want to look underneath the leaves and look for little silver, or not silver, sorry, little um, red or goldish looking egg clusters and squash them as soon as you see them because they hatch into, uh, into squash beetles. They look like, sorry, the lawnmowers going next door. They um, hatch into squash bugs and they look a lot like stink bugs and they just devastate your plants when they suck the sap out. These are more strawberries that we transplanted here a few years ago. And they did really well this year too. You can see they all, they've been trampled down a bit from the kids when they're hunting for berries. It's our other berry patch. Some more little goodies for the girls to find when they're out later. And then the raspberries down at this end. They're growing nice. This will be our first year to get raspberries off of these ones. Lots in there. Let's have a little walk down here. And look at the pumpkins. These were planted late because we had to dig up those potatoes to move out of here to plant in the other garden. But they're doing really well now that we've had, to, had that rain and the nice heat. Time to get up here and weed these. They haven't bunched out too much yet. So hubby will be able to come up here with the tiller and till around these and I'll just hand weed the little hills. Cucumber beetles. Rotten. Come here. Rotten, rotten things. You know, I never had these bugs until about two or three years ago. Garden most of my life and never even seen them. It's our corn patch. The corn on the ends is doing really well on both ends, but the corn in the middle is not near as high. So we weren't quite sure why. It's either because it's not quite as fertile as it used to be, or it's because of all the rain. Maybe the center was wetter and the corn didn't like that. We've started putting on some compost tea to try to help the corn in the center catch up. Normally our corn is really tall by now, but with the weather this year, it was planted a bit late and the corn doesn't really like a lot of rain. A lot of rain. This row is the butter nut squash. It's looking a little yellow too, so I'm going to get some more compost tea on it. We just fed it the other day, though. All the plants are stressed. This section here is empty. I left it so that uh, our other vines could uh, spread out. This is our watermelon. There's a few plants in here. Hopefully they'll do good. If it, and down this end is some straight eight cucumbers. I'm going to make a string trellis for these later. And on this side, I haven't weeded this row yet, as you can see. This is dark green zucchini for half of the row. And then this side of the row is the yellow crookneck squash. And see, here's another example. We have two plants that are doing pretty good here. And then the third and fourth plants, which are the same, were planted at the same time, and they were all started in the greenhouse. They're so much smaller. So I'm thinking it's just got to be too wet in the middle from all the rain. Anyway, then starts our tomatoes. 
We got lots of flowers starting. I'm trying something new this year. Instead of using cages, we we're trying the Florida weave method to string these up. And I've got these three tied up already. This second row here needs is almost ready for the second layer of string. And I need to tie this one up later and then finish reading the next three rows and get them tied up. Basically, you just you tie your string really tight around one end and then you weave it in an S shape like this in and out of your plants and then wrap it around each post and then continue that all the way down and then start a new row on the other end going backwards the opposite way so your plants get in between like a figure eight like this there's a string on this side and a string on this side and you keep doing that I don't know every four to six inches or so and it makes a flexible trellis to keep your plants in between and so far it's doing well with the strong winds we've had this year. So I'm kind of happy about that and it gives us the extra width that we can bring a tiller through because the tiller's not banging into the cages. So if it works out I'll stick with that method. Okay, the next couple of rows are the huckleberries. These are the garden huckleberries, those the big purple berries that are really bitter, raw, although my kids are strangely like them. Um, but you can cook them and use them similar to blueberries for jam and whatnot. So we're trying those again this year. And I think there's a row and a half or two rows of them. And uh, maybe there's more, I can't tell. These ones are the ground cherries. What's that? You almost look like a cucumber beetle, but not quite. What are you? Anyway, hopefully not something naughty. naughty. Look, they're starting to get little pods down there. So I'm really looking forward to trying these. So there's a couple rows of them. Then in here, there's eggplant, which isn't doing very well at all, and basil. And it's been, they've been both been so stressed by all the rain. The bugs are going crazy after them. They're hardly growing at all. I might till them all up and put something else in here. I'm not sure. I haven't been able to put anything on them to get rid of the bugs, assuming I can find a plant to show you, because of all the rain. You can't put, you know, dish soap mix or neem oil or anything on plants and then just have it all washed right, right, right back off. Oh, I don't know. We all have flops. Look, there's, there's a little eggplant. That thing should be knee high by now. Oh well. And then there's a couple of collard plants. And then starts the cabbages, which are also getting eaten like crazy by probably cabbage worms. And that's going to get sprayed today with some BKT, or if I'm remembering the letters right. But overall, it's not doing too bad. That one's getting eaten really bad. Poor thing. Look at that. But most of them are doing pretty good. So we'll get that taken care of today. And then this row is another planting of beans. They're starting to flower. This row, the germination was really, really spotty because of all the rain, but the ones in the raised beds came up great. And as you can see, I haven't weeded these ones yet. I started at the other end of the garden, and I'm working back. I think this one had dill. Yeah, there it is. See? There is something in here. So that'll get weeded soon, too. And then the next couple of rows are rutabagas, and some are turnips. And I promise there are some in here. There's one here. Yeah, there's some. And then these rows are asparagus seed. Some of them, one row was transplants and the other two or three were seeds. So I'm not sure if the seeds have come up yet or not, but I know the transplants did okay. <laughs> the 
the purple potato flower. It's funny because potatoes flower the same color that their tubers will be. And you can see these have a blue or purple hue to them, if the camera's showing it right. And that's how you can tell what they'll be. The stems also have a bit of a color, a bit of a purple tinge. The peas are started flowering a few days ago. They're starting to show some pods. Their germination was a bit spotty this year too. So I'm going to plant a second crop probably in August so that we'll have a fall harvest. Normally these produce like crazy for us but oh well. We've had three very challenging garden years all in a row. And we've started working on weeding these raised beds out too. It's the garlic in there. The onions. They're starting to form some nice bulbs. This is, you can see, I've weeded down this side and I still have to do that side. Let's walk around in the middle and have a look. one has the carrots. They're doing pretty good. Need to be weeded again, but everything needs to be weeded again. It's amazing how a bit of rain can really just set you back. In the middle here, I had a plant, second planting of spinach, but it didn't really come up. There was, only, I think, only one or two plants you can see there. So I filled the area in with some peppers, with some green bell peppers. Lettuce is doing great. We're start, going to start harvesting that. And then this was my second planting of lettuce. And we've already harvested the radishes that were in here. We grew the longer icicle type radishes. And they did really well. And this is dill that came up from like it's wild. The only thing is it doesn't smell like dill. So it may have crossed with something. And the spinach that did come up from that first planting has gone to seed. So I'm going to pull that stuff out. And I don't know, I'll put something else in here. The beans are flowering like crazy here. I don't want to touch these too much because they're still wet from the dew. So hopefully they should do well. I'm hoping we get lots of beans because we're starting to get low on those. And over in here we have beets. And again, their germination was really spotty. I planted them three inches apart in a grid pattern. And well, you can see how much bare areas there are. So I'm the only one here that likes beets, so, so I guess it won't be too bad. I could plant some more though, I might. and this other part of the onions that I have to weed later today. Now our potatoes. The main plants are doing great. They've all been flowering for a while and they're so tall. I know it's hard to tell without anybody standing in there but they're waist high on this end. The section down in the middle isn't is tall but the far end is. And it's because we think there's a great big bedrock over there because there's a big square area that goes out into the lawn and it's almost perfectly square shaped but the water seems to drain really quick there. It's always drier and the plants don't do as well so they need more water. So we figure that there's, there's a lot of bedrock in the area. But these are doing great. When my three-year-old walks through here, she, it almost comes to the top of her head. It, she's just like a little jungle. And this one here is our red pie pumpkins. They're starting to pick up. I have to check these for those squash bugs too. You can see by the yellow color, some of them are a little stressed. This garden gets really wet. 
this little garden down the edge of the driveway here. On this side I put in the sunberries. They're starting to perk back up. They just got planted way too late. But with the rain, I just couldn't get out here. So I am expecting that they will bush out and hopefully still give us some berries. They were all flowering in their pots. And they were just, you know, in the little cell packs. But about half the driveway is with these sunberries. And then, uh, after that, we have our mystery tomato, which isn't looking happy now that I planted it, but looked fine when it was stuck in a cell pot. <laughs> Ironically, that's funny. This is the one that was coming up growing with the sunberries, or not the, sorry, not the sunberries, the um, ground cherries, and I didn't know what it was. So if it produces anything, we'll figure out. I'm thinking it's a cherry tomato of some kind, but we'll find out. And then these are the three little pepper plants that I had started. Originally I was trying to put in the greenhouse, but I haven't had a chance to clean that out yet. They're the green bell peppers. But we do have um, a volunteer tomato plant coming up in the greenhouse that's growing like crazy. I'll try to remember to film that next time. So I'm not sure what kind it was. We've had different types in there over the years, but some seeds must have been either been dropped or a tomato that didn't get cleaned up or something. So I'd love to hear how your gardens are doing. How, how has your weather been? Are you having a really wet year too? I know I've heard a lot of people online saying their gardens have flooded this year. I know a lot of the farmers around here still have empty fields. Uh, a lot of them that had, no, they would normally plant corn or whatnot. They just could not get it in in time this year, so there's a lot of empty fields sitting around. Some farmers just switched what crop they were going to grow, but uh, it's still sad to see. And you know that's going to be raising the prices of food. Pretty much every week we go to the grocery store, the prices are going up. Makes it hard to keep up, but that's when I really love to be able to walk out here to my own grocery store. I like to grow my groceries. It really helps. The only downside to the climate that we have, being we're in a cooler climate, is that really you don't start producing much until late into July and August. But if you're in a warmer climate, you're probably harvesting quite a bit already. I'd love to hear what you're up to. And take care, everyone.